Okay, so welcome everyone to this new session of the unit community hours. The agenda for today has three topics. First, I'm going to present what is new on the new Ujuni version 2021-12. Yeah, now I will tell you why we are not going to have 2021-11. Then Thomas will make a presentation about the links to vendor security, uh, security advisory in the patch details page, which is something very interesting because also will allow you, if you have some knowledge of development to do this for new operating systems. And then finally, Ricardo will present the pay as you go client support. So let's get started. Well, first of all, the reason we are not going to have a unit 2021-11 is a very good one, which is that we want to complete the integration of the salt as a bundle. If you don't know what this is, it basically means that starting with this version, we will have a package that will contain salt, the Python interpreter, and all the Python dependencies that are required to run, to run the salt minion. And this is a huge benefit because you know that in, with this, we can support all the operating systems that do not have the required modules or that the, or when they have a old Python interpreter and it will be somehow make easier to add new operating systems to Uyuni as well. If you want to check all the details, all the details about the salt bundle, there is a presentation, if I recall correctly, from Pablo from maybe two months ago, or maybe or maybe it was during the last month about it. We are also adding Arch 64 support for OpenSUSE Lib 15.3, CentOS 7 and 8, and of course all the clones, Rocky Linux uh, 8, Alma Linux 8. The things that are going to work there are exactly the same we have for all for the other architectures, except with well useful limitations. Could be something about the virtualization, etc. But of course, you will be able to manage all those operating systems on those architectures, install packages, remove them, apply high states, configurations, etc. Audit, etc. etc. We are also adding the system reactivation from the XML RPC and web UI because in the past it was only possible from the bootstrap script. Now, when you log in, if the, if the uni instance is running out of a space, you will see a low disk space notification. This is not going to contain all the details about what's going on, but at least it will allow anyone to tell the administrator that, yeah, something has to be done about that because otherwise you know that if the server is running out of you know, out of disk space, then the services will be stopped. So at least this will give, me, give some reaction time. Ideally, of course, every uni server administrator should be monitoring the hardware and the status of the uni server as well. We are adding package, uh, package locking for salt minions. This was a request that uh, was pending for a long time. So this is not restricted to traditional anymore. We added the Prometheus black box exporter, meaning that you will be able to integrate checks for HTTP, HTTPS, uh, pinging, et cetera, at Prometheus, which was not possible until now. We have some content lifecycle management improvements. Now you can see the date and time of the last bill for each, for each project, instead of having to look at them one by one, opening them separately. And we also have new XML RPC API methods for salt key that should be should, should help you if you want to automate some tasks. There are as well a couple of deprecations. The first one is CentOS 8. I'm not talking about CentOS 8, 8 stream, I'm talking about the classic one. As you know, it is going end of life by the end of the year. So, well, the support is going away from Uni as well. As always, this does not remember that we will remove the client tools repositories. And at least for a while, send the, the old CentOS 8 should still work. But 
remember that since you will not get more updates from CentOS, you should consider switching to other alternatives such as Rocky Linux or Alma Linux, for example. And then finally, the traditional stack is now being deprecated. So far, we are not removing anything, but after the next summer, we will start doing some cleanup. Now, I know that some people is still using the traditional stack because they want to have another salt master or because there are some things that, you, that until now you could only do with traditional, but we are, first of all, we are implementing for salt the things that were only available on traditional. And now with the salt bundle, for now it is not going to be documented, but it should be possible to run the salt minion as a bundle and then have another salt master if you want with the salt with the classic RPM for the traditional minion. And uh, I think something was waiting to be accepted. Okay, whoever approved, thanks for that. And those are the news for the new universe. As you see, we have a lot of things. The expectation is to release this by the end of the next week, which is going to be the first week of December. If there are further problems, maybe we will need to delay a bit more, but I'm quite sure that by the second week of December, this will be published already as some kind of, well, <laughs> uh, pre-winter holidays gift. So if you have any questions, any concerns, any suggestions, go ahead, please don't be shy, just ask. And if not, if everything is clear, then Thomas? Yes. Can present now. I will stop the presentation now that I see the button very well. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I would like to quickly show you a small convenience feature that we have added in the patch, patch page. So let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so this is the list of the patches available. And as usual, if you click on one, you can see all the details of the patch. But one of the small information, piece of information that we were missing is a link to the actual advisory published by the vendor. And now we have added here in the details page. So in this case, this is an advisory from SUSE. And then uh, if you click on the link, you can see the, the, the original advisory that was published. Uh, this, URL, this URL is generated uh, on the fly from the data that is already available in the database. So this means that uh, this link will work for all the existing data that is available inside the Uyuni installation. And in this case, this is generated from the year and the type of bug and uh, the ID of the patch. Uh, but this is not limited to SUSE patches, and this works also for our other vendors. So, for example, here you can see a patch which is starting for, from uh, AL, and uh, this is an Alma Linux errata. So, here we have the link to the Alma Linux website for the advisory. And uh, as another example, we have also this one starting with AL, which are from um, Oracle. And so here as well, we have at the end of the page, uh, we have the link to the advisory that Oracle publishes. And this is made possible because this system is fully pluggable. So it's based on uh, small classes that uh, can describe the URL for each, for each vendor. And it's uh, very, very easy to add uh, support for other vendors. The, Feature will be fully documented when we release it on, uh, when we merge it on the master, we will add the, the documentation in the wiki page of GitHub, but I can quickly show you how it works. So basically we have this uh, uh, very simple interface that uh, you have to implement with two methods. One is to retrieve the actual uh, URL. The other is to define the, uh, the announcement ID, which is the text that is used in the interface. 
And uh, when you have implemented this one, so each method receive the information about the Rata and all the information can be used to generate the URL and the announcement that we want to show. And when the implementation is done, what you have to do is just add uh, here to the supported vendor enum uh, the, the new vendor type, specifying what is the, you, the email address of the vendor that needs to match the type of Rata that you are supporting and just uh, give a supplier that gives you the new instance for for that. And yeah, that is basically all you have to do to implement uh, the support for a new for a new vendor. So this is all for this uh, very quick uh, feature presentation. So if you have any question, otherwise uh, I will stop sharing and you can go on with the other part of the presentation. I just have one. Are we going to document this at the uni wiki so the yes. rest of the people can remember? Very good. Yes, one, once we have, uh, because this is yet not yet merged to master, so the master branch, when it will be, I will add the documentation in the wiki. <clears throat> very nice. Yeah, this is very useful and especially very easy to use, even for people who's not a Java developer such as me. I think I would be able to, to handle it. So thanks a lot, Thomas. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay, and uh, now Ricardo is going to talk about the pay-as-you-go client support. Ricardo, go on, please. Sure. Hey, hold you. Uh, everyone, I hope you guys can hear me and can see my screen. Yep, it works. Okay, cool. So um, I don't have a, a presentation. I will just do a demo about what is implemented. Um, in the scenarios, if you are if you are running a, a uni server on the cloud, and you have some uh, pay as you go machines running in the cloud, you want to to be able to manage them um, because these machines will have access to repositories to get updates. Uh, but if you don't have an SEC account with this um, uh, with this license assigned to your account, you will not be able to download packages to the uni server. Um, but we want to so this, this is this is about <coughs> SUSE Linux Enterprise pay as you go, right? Exactly. SUSE Linux Enterprise pay as you go. Okay. Um, in here, in my AWS account, I have uh, a Uni server and uh, two pay as you go machines and one Ubuntu machine. Uh, and I want to be able to manage this these machines. Uh, the Ubuntu one is just to show an example of the one that will not work. So because this is only to, to manage um, SUS Linux Enterprise Server. Uh, in my uh, Uni server, I don't have uh, any product because I don't have uh, organization credentials uh, assigned in here. And this is just to be able to, to show you uh, the exact products that are being loaded uh, from the PayZigo instance. Uh, but you should have your credentials uh, set in here. Uh, even if you don't have any uh, products assigned to your credentials in the SEC. Uh, otherwise, it, it will not work because it doesn't have the information for the products. And in the channels, I don't have any ch channel assigned um, in, in this uni server. So what you need to do is to go to the admin part. I now have a new option in here, which is pay as you go. And I should have uh, the SSH connection to the pay as you go instance. What this will do is basically extract all the authentication data that is needed um, from this pay as you go machine to connect uh, to the RMT servers that exist on the cloud and provides uh, the sleep packages for, for update. So I will add one machine in here and I will add a simple SLE 15 machine. I have the host name, the port is the default one, the user is SC2, I don't have any password set, and I need to get my private key. And if I save this, it will add um, a new connection, so this connection list, and you have a taskmatic task which will um, basically extract all the information, and you can see that this where it's successful. And if I go to the product list, I can see all the product versions of the same family. So the machine has a, a SLE 15 SP2, but I can have access 
to all the same, uh, the, all the versions of the same product family and the same architecture. Okay. If I try to add one machine that is not uh, a PSGO, a SLI uh, PSGO machine, you can try to add an Ubuntu machine. So, toast. And the key. This also triggers a new execution, and you can see an error in the interface that is uh, is not a PSGO instance, so we cannot retrieve information from here. Uh, this feature doesn't work only um, with uh, the simple Slim machine; it also works with any um, products from uh, from SUSE that is a PSGO support. For example, uh, SLI 15 SP2 for SAP. And again, if I use the same credentials, copy the key again. It will refresh. Okay, credentials was successfully refreshed. And now I have more products in here and I have the SAP products also available to synchronize the repositories. Okay, I now will add the SUSE Enterprise Server for SAP applications. And from now on, this will work as it worked before, but the difference is instead of downloading the packages from the SEC repository, it will download directly uh, from the Cloud RMT server. Okay. It's adding the product, so it will take a few seconds. Okay, the product is added, and you can see, I hope in here, a list of products. Yeah, here it goes. And um, if you go to the console and the server, uh, you can see that the repo sync is already running for this product. And okay, synchronization is complete for at least one channel. And if you go to the web interface, you can see that the, the first channel, or the parent channel, has already oh, two packages, and those were obtained directly from the Cloud RMT uh, servers. Okay, and this is what I have to show you guys. And I don't know if you guys have any questions, uh, suggestions for this feature. I see we have some questions in here. Um, well, uh, yes, the key is stored permanently um, in the in the server. Um, basically, because uh, the credentials that we extract from uh, the cloud instance, um, the credentials to authenticate against the the RMT server has the time to leave. So we need to periodically um, refresh these credentials uh, at the moment is configured to refresh uh, each 10 minutes and if you don't have the the private key uh, we will need to ask always the, the customer to uh, to insert the private key to be able to refresh this credential so we, we don't have much option in here so we need to to save it i hope i answered your question don uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could um, put uh, store the private key in the SSL keys that section where we already have in a, in a union reference it from there. I was just curious if that was a future feature product project for this. Um, yeah, it could be an improvement, but at the moment um, we are not using it. Yeah, at the it moment be, you're just mainly yeah. putting it in each time, right? Yeah, we yeah, are just putting it each time. And uh, I mean, we already have them. Um, we're using entitlement keys, sort of like that on the for uh, talking to the Red Hat Content Delivery Network. I was just curious if we could mm -hmm. like piggyback on that and make use of that key. key uh, 
anyway. <clears throat> yeah, for you know, Red Hat. You're not going to use the Red Hat key, but, but <laughs> yeah. we already have a place to store SSL keys. It is for consistency's sake. I thought it would be good. Yeah, but the, in, if I get it right, they're talking about the Red Hat support for also the pay as you go, right? Um, well, Red Hat, yes, that's exactly right. So if you're doing Red Hat pay as you go, you put the entitlement uh, certificate and key into that SSL thing. So if you just type SSL there in the search page, you'll see where it's stored. <clears throat> um, yeah, but uh, a good consistency thing for us for you need to be able to uh, pull pull certs from that same. Uh, yeah, but but the difference if I get it right is that in the um, for Red Hat, you need to manually SSH to the to the machine and extract the uh, the authentication data for that machine, and then copy it by hand to the SUS manager server and add it yeah. manually to to that all that places, right? Yeah, you have to. You have to because there's two different certificate entitlement certificates, mm -hmm. and those are very. I mean, <clears throat> they can actually be refreshed and deleted on the Red Hat side and re. So they end up getting recreated. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not super great. Yeah, but in here, uh, what we are doing is uh, all the all those manual steps that you are referring to the Red Hat uh, in the Red Hat world. You are doing yeah, that don't have to automatically. Yeah, any channels. No, you don't need to create anything. You don't need to SSH <laughs> directly to the machine. You just yeah. give uh, Uni uh, the the information to SSH to the machine, and we will basically extract all the. Uh, credential and cryptographic material that is needed to connect to the uh, to the RMT server. And, and this a... is um, so. This is uh, hyperscaler context sensitive too, right? So if I if I put in an, an Azure machine's credentials in here, it would pull the RMT information from Azure, then, right? Yes, exactly. Um, and um, this, that manual step that we were talking about um, from the Reddit world, it's done automatically by this uh, taskomatic task, uh, which every 10 minutes will refresh all the authentication data and retrieve all the certificates, all the information from there. Uh, to be able to use this in different clouds, um, it's possible, but uh, because of some restrictions on the, on the RMT servers that are provided by our cloud team, uh, from the SUSE cloud team, um, you need to be running the SUSE manager server in the same cloud uh, where the PESIGO instance is, is running. And if you are running... Yeah, I was just in, about in, to ask about that. Yeah. If Uyuni has to be in the same cloud, so... Yeah, needs to be in the same cloud or... Um, and if you are, for example, in AWS, needs to be in the same availability zone, okay? Uh, but this this is a limitation from the cloud or IMT server because they have the, the, the IP... Uh, uh, and the domain name hard coded in yeah, the host files. Yeah, they're doing IP so, validations. Yeah, right. IP validations and uh, IPs are different in different availability zones. And if you have a server in one availability zone and the Pezigo machine in another one, you probably will not be able to see the RMT server that that Pezigo machine is seeing, and and it's probably in a different IP address. Um, so there is not much that we can do <laughs> about that. Uh, uh, Beside the document that uh, this needs to be configured in this way. Yeah, it's great work, man. Seriously, it's uh, very fast and simple. And I think the question when you were presenting this <clears throat> in a different context before came about how does this align with perhaps if I already had SCC correlated channels to those same products. Um, it would merge in fine. It, does it? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't conflict with it at all, right? No. If you have some uh, organization credentials in here, so SCC credentials, you will be entitled to to have access to a certain number of products, right? And a certain number of channels. Uh, those products and channels will appear in here, in this product, in the product step. Um, and if you have access to the to channels in SEC and channels in RMT, it's for the same uh, access for the same channel in both sides. Uh, Uni will prefer the access to the SEC, 
okay and we'll download uh, information from SEC because if you have information if you have credentials from the SEC it will download it from there um, but if you have like a mix access which is also also possible if you are in a, in a SUS manager world you can have um, a SUS manager entitlement and that will uh, give you access um, to the tools repository uh, and bootstrap repository for each product and that is not provided by the cloud RMT but if you have that credentials, um, you will be able to synchronize automatically everything from, from that product. OK, and some of some of the repositories will come from RMT and other parts of the repositories will come from uh, directly from ICC. One remark from my side and one suggestion. The remark is maybe you already noticed, but just just in case we will make this very clear in the documentation that the instances you added there at the pay as you go tab, mm -hmm. they should be alive and running. Um, yes, it's going to be checking the data that's in them every now and then. I don't know the frequency. Maybe Ricardo can tell you for sure. Yeah, the frequency it's checking for for the, um, the, the information. Uh, or to update inf the authentication data every 10 minutes. But well, that uh, it also depends on, on the cloud provider that you are using, uh, because different cloud providers have different time to leave for the authentication tokens, okay? Uh, however, if you destroy or if you terminate the, the machine, the credentials will not be val valid anymore. Uh, but if you have the machine stopped, the time the credentials are, uh, we are be using the, the credentials that were uh, get it in the last time you connect to the machine, but for how long that uh, credentials will be available or will be valid will depend from cloud provider to cloud provider. Uh, in some cases are one hour, in other cases are 20 minutes. OK, but that is also controlled by the, the cloud provider. And uh, our advice is uh, to keep your uh, your PSGO instance running uh, if you need to so synchronize channels. However, you don't really need a big instance for that. So you some, use something small in some clouds uh even they can be free well not for a i'm not sure maybe oracle has uh, free SDD, but not sure uh but keep them running because otherwise you will get errors mm -hmm. yeah. in the sync of course whatever is already synchronized is already on the uni server and you can use it but you will not get yeah updates. you will not get any updates just one more thing to see uh if you uh put for example my service if you put an invalid host name, we will show this information in the in the web interface and also in a valid key. You should also see it in the in the web interface. So uh, in this case, no need. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's in the valid, invalid private key. So no need to go to the console and see scrap the logs to see what is happening. So in, uh, I'm expecting that in most of the cases you will be able to see the error if it's any, just uh, by looking in the interface without need to to go to the, the command line. And the suggestion I wanted to make, can you go to the products tab? Not sure if we will be able to see it now. No, because it's refreshing, but when it, ah, there you go. Yeah, it's so, a little bit slow. <laughs> it's uh, no, what I mean is that on the right, it's maybe for some people a bit scary. What I understand here is that since you didn't add any SEC credentials, then of course you, you are not yes. getting anything from SEC. But maybe it's slightly unrelated to this to this uh, new thing. But maybe we should have something there, such as yeah, well, uh, no SEC account available. Um, uh, yes, but for for using this, you need to have an SEC account. Okay, it's free to open an account, even if you don't have any entitlements in that account. You need to have an SEC account. And it and does add... say right there, SUSE Customer Center in that refreshing the product yeah. catalog, right? Yeah. Yeah, and this is because we need to have the product catalog. Otherwise, we will not be able to uh, to to compare the information from the the pay as you go instance, the sleep as you go instance, with the products that are available or, or the products that exist and the URLs and all that information. Uh, 
uh, and we are unable to basically load all this product information. You need to have an SEC account um, to be able to get the product, the product uh -huh. tree and the product list. Yeah, that's right. But you can use this without a SEC account, right? So you could be using uh, exclusively pay as you go instances. You can use exclusively pay as you go instance, but you need to have an SEC account um, inserted in here. It, this is working because I had in before uh, an SEC account configured in this machine, and I just remove it to be uh, basically to be easier for you guys to see the difference in the product list without all the information about the products that I have in my account. You know, uh, but you need at least to, to add your SEC account once to to synchronize the product tree. Otherwise, we don't ah. have the product tree information, and without the product tree information, we cannot know which products are installed uh, in the machine and which products will be available. So this is required, uh, and, but this will also be uh, available in the documentation. No, not perfectly clear. Sorry, I got confused by the fact that uh, no account was available here at the organization credentials tab. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's not available because I, I just removed it before the presentation to, <laughs> to be yeah. easier. Uh, yeah, yeah. To see the difference in the in the product list, otherwise it will be uh, at least with uh, a lot of products, and I don't want to, to show too too many stuff. Okay, any more questions, feedback about this feature? Thanks a lot, man. I think this is looking really good. Okay, thank you, Dan. Okay, if no more questions, back to you, Julio, and thank you for well. time, guys. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for this. It's very. I think it's very useful as well. So, well, now we have a few minutes. If someone wants to ask, comment, discuss something, anything that comes to your mind. Yeah. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be presenting actually next weekend at Ohio Linux Fest in Columbus, Ohio, USA on Uyuni in the afternoon uh, there. It's one of the longest running open source conferences, certainly in the Midwestern US, but probably in, in all of US. I've spoken there. I, the first time I spoke there was 2008. So, <clears throat> and uh, this year I'm talking about Uyuni and trying to emphasize all the things that make it a great tool for people who use open source products. Uh, anything from uh, from Alma Linux and Rocky Linux to OpenSUSE and all the stuff in between and all the cool things that we can do. So um, just if you find an open source conference near you and you would like somebody from the Uyuni team to help present there, uh, please make us aware of that. Or if you're going to speak, please share in the community hours uh, when it's going to be and and all of that. And we more, more than likely love to support you and, you know, give you a template, a presentation template or whatever you need to be able to make it happen. So. Uh, I'll be thinking of you guys next week as I'm presenting and hopefully we'll have great response and more people at the next community hours, which like uh, like Julio said, is going to be what, end of January 2022? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, awesome. Great. Good luck, Dong. I'm sure, I'm sure it will be... <laughs> Very interesting. It Shame should be I'm entertaining. You, you know how I present, so yeah. Yeah, and as Don said, well, remember, the Unity community is not only the people who is uh, developing, even if they are working for SUSE, but it's every one of you. If you are helping at the mailing list, if you are helping at Gitter or sending translations, helping with the documentation if you want to present submitting them, bugs exactly yeah. of course <laughs> of course of course or if you are an external developer and you are submitting small bug fixes then every one of you is a member of the community or even if you are 
only just a user. So if you want some help from us to present somewhere else, or if it, there is something you want to improve, or in some cases there is something you want to implement and you need some help, just remember to contact us because, well, we are here to help as well. Okay. Anyone else wants to say something? Ask something? Very well. In that case, thank you very much, everyone, for attending this session. Have a very nice, well, I guess that most of us will talk before that, but otherwise, have a very nice new year, and I will see you in uh, January 28th, which is the last Friday of the first month of the next year. So enjoy a lot. Have a very, a very nice weekend, and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Julio, uh, Julia, yeah. can you wait for a second? Then? Um, yes. Uh, Stefan here. Uh, I thought I'd just gonna nag, uh, well, catch you and nag you a bit on some topics. <laughs> um, what, what I was wondering early on, you spoke about um, releases and making changes to to be able to release a um, Alma version. Can you tell me or point me into the direction what to look at or where to change it? Because I haven't really thought about how to start getting involved in creating a release version. Hmm. Yeah, that's something we need to discuss because as you know, to have a proper release, we should modify the product definitions, which is the 000 product yeah. package. But if we want to release something like a tech preview or with our proof of concept, then we can we could arrange something without that, even if not everything is working, so people can start having a look at it and giving giving us feedback. That would be that would that would mean preparing some instructions about how to install Uyun in this way. That's something yeah. we can discuss maybe next week. Okay. So it it would be mainly the uh triple zero files and I assume you're scripting a lot to create a release, or how does it work? No, to create a release is quite uh, quite easy, in fact, because I just changed the version at 00, zero product, the pattern, and some other packages. And then there is a command at the open build service, which is OSC release, and that will get all the binaries we have at systems management to Unimaster on the sub projects into stable. And at that point, the release is ready. So it's not quite oh. complicated. But of course, for a unit based on Alma Linux, if we want to have something before we have 00, zero product early, then we can arrange something similar, but the users will need some special instructions to install it. Yeah, that's a, that's a different story than certainly. Okay, I was just wondering whether there's like some development to create these release scripts, but doesn't sound like it really. Yeah, exactly. No, no, not really. If we are able to get zero zero product ready from a Linux, then there is nothing else we really need to adapt. Okay. Um, no, that, that sounds easy. Then I was just trying to wonder whether I should plan my work over Christmas for something else. <laughs> um, okay. No, that, that's all. Thanks. Um, then yeah, we can talk at a later stage. Then. No problem. Just. Okay. Then. Well, I see pretty much everyone left, but anyway, thanks again for attending and talk to you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye bye.